I don't know that we have a whole lot of questions. Maybe we do. Are there any questions on welfare? I think, no, I, I don't, <coughs> excuse me, I'll raise, because we're raising our hands now, aren't we? Mr. Weber. Yeah. Um, welcome. Thank you. I'm new to public office in town, so bear with me uh, when I ask a couple questions um, or make a statement. The welfare clerk's age uh, wages, just so the, um, the public knows, the 7.92% increase has to do with collective bargaining. That's correct? Yes. The team's the position. Yes. So that's, that's automatic. It was already voted on. It's already voted on. Yeah. That's correct. And other than that, uh, I, I don't have any. Uh, I, I do see supplies and expenses. Uh, pretty much stayed the same. Yeah. Yeah. No, good job. I have nothing mm -hmm. else. Just wanted the public to understand that's why that increase in outline. That's all I have for welfare. Anybody else on welfare? Okay. I've heard great things about what's going on in your okay. office, and uh, thank you for your service, and thank you for coming in. Thank you. <laughs> okay, next up is Mosquito Control. We're going to hear from Mosquito Control. Mosquito. No one here from Mosquito. Any discussion on mosquito control? Let me just get to that tab. It's flat. Yeah, it's it's pretty well. Uh, appreciate. Any further discussion on mosquito control? Thank you very much. On to the library. I'm sure someone here from the library. There is Amanda right there. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, any questions on library? The only thing that sticks out is the... Uh, Mr. Weber. The only thing that sticks out is the health insurance, but that's through no fault of Mandra. I just want to make a compliment to the library. I, uh, I have grandchildren that go there now, so uh, I, I got to tell you, you guys do an <laughs> unbelievable job. It's just a phenomenal resource. Also, uh, being the social media time that we're in, your folks really do a great, the, the, even the part-timers that work there, getting word out of different programs. It's, it's just phenomenal. So I just, I have no problem with this, uh, the great, uh, great budget, Mr. Chairman. Any other questions on the library? Hi, Amanda. Hi, Tim. Um, I do have a question. Do you, you have your own, you have a website, right? We do. And do you plan on outsourcing it? Not at the present time. It's not off the table, but not currently. Okay, so it is on the table? There's potential for change. Well, 61.27% on health insurance. Can you just briefly explain why that is? So part of the reason why the jump looks so drastic is because of the default budget this year. There's a, a health insurance policy that started this year that we've been paying that doesn't show up in the budget because we aren't in default. So that has to go in the 19. I have another employee who's getting married, and so that will be a new policy in, in 19. And then there's the 5% increase for all policies next year. So those okay. are the three so, changes. So you have two, two additional people on? One additional? People that have been working there right along, yeah. an added policy, not an added person, and then an added um, marriage. Okay, so an added person and a, and a change with family. Kathleen's been working with us since 2011, so yeah. she started her policy in 17, or in 18, excuse me. Okay. Before that, she didn't take health care. Okay. Did she get a stipend for not taking health care? We do not offer stipends at the library. So she just didn't take it, and she got no benefit not benefit for not taking it, is that Correct. right? Correct, yeah. Okay. And the other one was a, a change to a family plan. Exactly. Okay. Any, anything else? Nothing else? Thank you very much, Amanda. Mm -hmm. Next, uh, we have uh, the place we lay everyone to rest, cemetery. <laughs> or everyone willing, I guess I should say. <laughs> so anyone representing the cemetery is welcome to come on up in case there are any questions. Yes, Mr. Walburton. <laughs> I didn't get to the table yet. <laughs> I thought I saw your hand go up. Well, it, yes. <laughs> Good evening. Hello. Oh, could you introduce yourselves, please? Uh, my name is Mary Blackwell. I'm a cemetery trustee. I'm currently the chair. Uh, Brian Chevalier, cemetery sexton. <clears throat> Hello, cemetery Brian. Cemetery what? Sexton, superintendent. Ah. Um, 
really sticks out with some major, and, and I want to just go methodically through this, uh, why we see some major increases. The, starting with, I look at regular wages, uh, the budgeted for this year it was 43,648. You're asking uh, 47,840. That, uh, that increase is due to what? There was an increase in, in wages for the uh, general help uh, shortly after I took over <coughs> in March. And that would uh, contribute to some of that on an hourly rate, uh, as well as the thought of putting on two extra part-time individuals uh, going forward uh, for the summer, for beginning in the spring, summer and early fall cleanup. Okay, but remember, I'm specifically asking about your position. The line item says 47,840 yeah. funds the wages of, I guess we're calling you the cemetery sexton, which used to be this, Mr. Kenny's old position with superintendent. So my question to you is, where did we get this big jump from 43, from 43,648 to 44,7840 for your position? I only work pretty much on let me just put it to you this way, Mr. Warburton. I only work on a part-time basis. It's not a full-time basis for me at the moment. Well, so totally actually, my salary is nowhere as near that figure at the moment. Okay, so we're, we're looking at, this is the projected 2019 budget. So let me ask the question again. There is a line item that is funding your position for $47,840. Are you saying now that that's not going to be 47840 in 2019? It's a $4,000 increase. Yeah. I cannot speak to that. Do you, do you, the cemetery trustee want to speak to that? Or I'm just, <clears throat> the voters at home are watching this and right. they're saying, well, why is the big increase? What's $4,000 over the course of the year? So let me let me try this one more time. The line item says four, four I don't care about the year. It's forty seven thousand eight hundred forty dollars. My question is, why was there a four thousand dollar increase to the cemetery superintendent after we had a guy in there for thirty years who never got a four thousand increase? The minute he leaves, we I'm just asking the question so that I can be a proponent of this if it's if it's needed. But that's a big increase for whether it's Brian Chevalier, whoever, who put the $4,000 in there? How did that get to $4,000? It was voted on by the trustees. And why, in the cost of living and everything else, why did we go to that number? That's a pretty hefty increase. I'm not talking about the part-time now. I'm talking about this position, regular wages for one person. I'm just trying to do the math here. It looks, it's $330 roughly per month. So... I mean, it's about $80 a week, so it's not, well, I mean, 4000 yes, it looks a lot higher. But if it comes down, it's like $2 an hour more. But it's a 10% increase. That, that was just, when we talked about it, it was just, it seemed like a reasonable wage for the position. It, it doesn't seem that there's any surety on what you guys are saying. I, I don't think we're, you're in sync, but we'll hold that to the final review. Okay. My questions, it just seems to me for all the years we had cemetery budgets, the, the review of cemetery bud budgets literally took 10 minutes because it was the same low budget with one guy, maybe two part-timers doing a thousand things. The minute that gentleman has left, seems to be the trend. We seem to create another, it almost looks like the cemetery now is becoming its own mini empire. Because we go to part-time wages, we went from 47,000 actually budgeted in 2018 to 90,000, a 92% increase. And the reason this is important to bring up is because we never had this large of increase. And I guess I need, I would like to have you explain to this committee and the public watching, why are we doing that? Why is that going up that, that high? Do you want to take it? Mm -hmm. We've picked up the extra cemeteries. There is more work being done in the cemeteries that hadn't been done in the past. 
Okay, we have seven, seven cemeteries in town? I believe it's 13. 13? What do you mean we picked them up? We always have them. We had two more that we, we got this year. The two that the selectmen talked about, which, okay, they're not big areas, but I understand that, that doesn't really sell to me with why that large increase. I, I'm just trying to figure out where these numbers came from to look at one part-time ground supervisor, one part-time equipment operator, two seasonal employees, two seasonal employees, overtime wages, and this should come into the equation because I think it's very comparable. The, the contracted services, which is part of this whole deal, all this stuff that you've got down here used to be taken out of the Cemetery Burial Trust Fund. Why are we stopped doing that? Why are we doing putting them in the budget? I and I know you're a new trustee, I'm but yeah. yeah. So, but I, I, I got to tell you, you know, like I want to go back to what I've said. I want to be able to be a proponent of this budget. But if, I, <coughs> if we're not getting, and I'm not feeling warm and fuzzy on the answers of why, and, and Mr. Chevalier, by the way, does a great job, and I don't think anybody's debating that, but you can't just come in and say, well, we gave them, went up 4,000 because we felt that's what it was worth. That's a huge increase. When the prior year is the, the gentleman in that position, some years got 2%, 1%, maybe 3%. So, so I, I, I didn't get the answers I wanted on that, but I do want to ask, go right into, the, I'm going to go back on the contracted services. Why are we, why is all this being put in the budget? 350% increase. Let me, let me be fair to you, because you're new. I would appreciate, and I'm going to ask through the chairman, that these questions that I have asked, you get with your other two trustees and work with Brian. We need answers to this. This is a huge increase for this budget. I think I can tell you in part, uh, going forward with, um, well, there's an item there that's reburials. You know, without going into a lot of detail, because this is not the proper venue, uh, there have been some stumbling blocks along the way uh, that have resulted in a cost. In going forward, um, there's no doubt in my mind that there will certainly be more cost incurred because of uh, corrections, past transgressions that have gone on there. And <clears throat> I'd be happy to sit and talk with anyone. But I don't think, Mr. Walbert, this is the venue to talk to talk about it in. To be honest with you. Well, I'm more than aware of what's going on at the yeah, cemetery, well, as you well know. So. Costly. Yeah. Actually, just a, a point. Um, this is the forum to talk details. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Now there may be some items that, um, for personal reputations and uh, personnel matters in general, that this is not the proper forum for. And, in which case we then create a non-public meeting I think to create that form. Are you requesting a non-public meeting to discuss these items? I think so. It would, it would be good if you folks okay. feel you have a need to know this. Okay. Uh, it certainly is not, shouldn't be in public session. I, I, I appreciate that very much. Yeah. Do, you, do you wish uh, to address all of the questions that Mr. Walburton is addressing in a non-public? Is that what I'm hearing? No, but, no, absolutely not, but this okay. is one specific area. Okay. All right. So we have... In, in one specific item in this area. Okay. But, but yeah. The, qu the question, and I appreciate absolutely non-public, and there may be other reasons why we might not be able to do that anyway at this time, but it still doesn't answer the question why all of this stuff couldn't come out of the Cemetery Burial Trust Fund. Well, why I mean, is it bit budgeted? I mean, reburials and moving of vaults, absolutely, if we need to do it, but why isn't it being coming out of the fund we already have in the cemetery? I cannot answer that, Mr. Morgan. Okay, so that's a question we're going to need to... Mr. Manager? Can't take it out without, it, without a warrant article in town meeting. Then why don't we put a warrant article? Why didn't they put a warrant article going into this 2019? Can you do that? That makes sense if that's what they need to do. Just want to answer that, Mr. Manager? No? These are regular appropriation accounts. They're regular appropriation amounts. They were incorrectly done to begin with. They need to be corrected, and this is the cost to get it corrected. Thank you. Well, I find it. 
once again, I find it interesting after 30 years we're, we're making comments that they were incorrectly done. But I think the, the issue I still have, and I'm not getting a finite issue, which is typical. I want to know if, never mind, we can't. Can we take them out of the cemetery or the trust fund? We always did, like taking trees down and everything else. Why can't we do this? In the 12 years I've been here, we've taken one Warren article from that county. Yeah, we, never, we never did the, every, all this every, other Everything else was taken from general appropriation. And yes, you will see some things in the warrant for the uh, cemetery trust fund, the portion that can be taken from those proceeds, which is the burial proceeds, the, the sale of lots. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will, re I will be revisiting this at final review with the wages area and the, um, the contractor service. That's all I have at this time. Anybody else any questions on the cemetery? I just have one. Mr. Frank. Uh, going back to regular wages, your budgeted and uh, your actual expenditures were 43,638 in 2017, and your actual year to date as of September is 12,756. Why such vast difference? And you're, and you're basically telling me that you're going to pick up the rest. My particular, are you speaking to my particular wage? Well, whatever line item 021-41951, the first ferry line. That would be my, that would be my wage. Okay, so my question is, nine months year to date, 12,000. It's usually, I've only worked on a part-time basis. Oh, to, to, okay. To, uh, to and, then, and then it's going things. to full-time. Uh, perhaps not. Oh, okay, okay. Any other questions? No. Uh, I have some. Uh, did I hear your title is Sexton? That's what they call it, yeah. yeah. You like that title? Uh, no, I'd rather have superintendent. Yeah, I think that yes, would be, like be that far too. superior as well, but that's uh, not really our, our, uh, our purview to deal with that. But I did, I did hear, I thought I heard you say reburial. Did I hear you say reburial earlier? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, what, what is the story with reburials? Didn't we bury them right to the first night? No. Really? Many not. Wow. And that's why it should be a non-public session. Uh huh. I want to know where the expense comes from. And going forward, I see more. I don't know that, but since I've been there, and what I've uncovered through investigation and so forth, uh, I think we're going to see some more. Uh huh. Is that something you want to dig into, uh, Mr. Well, Warren? the only comment I make is, is unfortunately, uh, we've had several years of cemetery trustees who aren't here now. I find it very interesting that in the last 30 years, or we'll even go sooner, that no one in, the, in that capacity knew about, like, what was going on. I mean, see, that's, that's the other issue. It's just the public's being like, wait a minute. So if we need to do these expenses, Brian, my issue is where it's coming from. What fun? If we, we got to do it, we got to do it. But it goes back to this whole management factor of, I mean, we've had boards of trustees for cemetery for forever and ever, and we're just finding out now if there's issues. That's no, it, my, my, I'm asking because of, you know, he, he's suggesting that we need to deal with the reburial questions yeah. in a non public, and I'm wondering if that's an area that you wish to dig into. I don't know if digging into, but it would be interesting knowledge if. if uh, but but I, I share with you that we would, may want to revisit that because maybe there's situations going on now that we may not be allowed to right. revisit this at right. this time. I think the cost factors in regards to this issue, are, they're, they're an unknown. They really are an unknown going forward. And given what has been uh, spent thus far in taking care of these, uh, remedying, remedying these situations uh, going forward, I can, you know, I can almost assure that there will be more because there's a many, many, many years that this things have happened, and it takes going to take many, many years to unravel it. I suspect, mm -hmm. and they're not unraveled unless, well, we'll talk about it. Right. Mr. You, Manager, you uh, you referenced a warrant article to deal with burial. Is that correct? No. Oh no. What's the warrant article anticipated to be? They've asked the warrant articles to complete the work of the cemetery. The, the work being. So we'll get to those if the selectmen approve them. But it's nothing to do with reburial? No. Okay, thank you. So we have this budget plus the Warren articles we're yes. going to be looking at? Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
And the next question is for you, Christy. Uh, I see Social Security, Medicare, and New Hampshire retirement highlighted in this budget. I don't recall seeing them in other budgets. Normally, they go into personnel, right? And I'm just curious Except why. Except for they're... cemetery and library, since they have their own board of trustees, and they've always been in those sections of their budget. So that's the reason they're in here, because they have, they they're under a governing body called the trustees, which is elected, right? Okay, just want to understand that right. Okay, great. Any other questions on cemetery? Super. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Appreciate your help. Sure. And I would support any advocacy you want to make relative to changing the title. Consider it. Right. Okay. Parks and Recreation. Anybody have any questions on Parks and Recreation, Mr. Walbert? <laughs> You know I had questions. Well, I thought I saw you in right. Well, first of all, I want to I want to take a point of personal privilege, but before I do, I've heard a lot of comments uh, at other boards talking about, oh, people are leaving this town and people are leaving jobs. Well, I just want to, for the record, to show tonight, we've got Renee Boudreaux here, and we've also got Kevin Schultz, who were hired during my tenure. Um, so I don't see a lot of people leaving. You're going to hear that me talk about a lot of that as we move forward. Uh, I want to congratulate Renee. Um, he has just been a, a stalwart in this town, and I, I think uh, he thinks I feel old. Well, when my oldest daughter is 27, I remembers Renee when she was six or whatever. That, but thank you. But here's, here's the two questions I have, and it, and it stuck out to me like a sore thumb. Um, I, I wanted to call you, but I didn't want to get you know arrested because I called the rec director because we've got to go through a, a proper procedure, so that's why I didn't do it. So I ask it here. Um, the proposal for 2019 for regular wages increased by admin to move employees halfway to the minimum step according to MRI wage study, and then your program coordinator moved to 21.20 per hour, rec director meaning you moved to 31.75 per hour. Um, my question to you is, are, are you currently making this salary that, what is your current salary as we look in 18 as we get to end the year? The 2018 salary, I'm around 60 to 64, 459. And that's the program coordinators at that 43,000 number. But, I, but I'm a little confused here then because mm -hmm. the line item went up 2.38%. So when was your, you're both non-union positions uh, in the department, which has been the case. Uh, so 64459 is, is not an increase for you? That's what I made, was hired at when I came on in April of 2018. 2019? 18. 18. 2018, I'm Last sorry. Last April. Yeah, I, we're not in the 19th. So would be prior to you coming on in April, what was your salary? I was at the programmer position at that $43,000. So in seven months, and, and, and there's a reason I'm going this direction, because, and we're going to do a lot of talk about this in January, believe me, in a deliberate session. This whole MRI thing, the way I look at it, if somebody came and said, oh, my job's worth 80000 well, let's just move it up to the first step. It's getting out of hand. You're well worth the money. But the concern I have is the public's going to say, well, Renee's great. He started at 64. He was making 43000 in April. I understand that you're the director now, but I, I don't know what the prior director left at. I, I should know that. But anyway, it's so... It's an outstanding question we have. Oh, that's correct. You asked that. Thank you. Um, the program director, 43,118, is that current too? So that's, that's current. So we're not looking at any increases for 2019 for your position or the program? There is uh, the increase. The Board of Selectmen asked to adjust the director wage and the program coordinator wage for 2019. And that's where that 2% come? That's what that. And the adjustment came as a result of an MRA, MRI study? Correct. Hmm. Okay. Part-time wages. Um, and I'm, I'm anxiously waiting for Kids Kingdom to get done, and that wall has been gone for five years. You know I have kept asking for that wall that we built. The, yes. Um, Part-time wages, uh, 13 Point oh nine percent. What is increased here, Reverend? 
last year, halfway through 2018, they did an adjustment to two uh, part-time park staff and one office uh, position were adjusted with that study. And then there is adjustments in there for 2019 going forward. Okay, and grounds and fields? Yes. You're one of your favorite topics? Yeah. It looks like a pretty decent increase and what it comes down to is after looking through the budget and seeing things that may have been missed in previous budgets, I, the additions I made were tennis court maintenance for stuff like cracks that go in the concrete and if you don't maintain those year after year they're going to get bigger and there's going to be injuries and tripping hazards. Parking lot lights for the parking lots down at Tuck Field, there are none at the moment. Um, and when people come out of Tuck Field from doing a program at night or early morning uh, activities there, it's dangerous. It just isn't safe, it's dark. Um, and these are simple additions that can make our parks safer, which is ultimately what all of these additions really are. We have one baseball field that has no protective fencing in front of the dugouts. So a foul ball can go zinging right into a dugout and hit a kid in the head. Um, that was the adjustment for our tuck softball field protection fencing. And then I have a line item in there for tree removal, which I walked the parks with the um, tree warden and we looked at all of uh, the issues. We had two companies come in and do estimates for him. Um, that I put in there because I don't know what the tree warden's gonna have for a budget, but I have a bunch of parks with a bunch of fields with a bunch of kids on them playing all the time, and we have some issues that we need to treat. So I have that in there to take care of those so we don't uh, have bigger problems on our hands going forward. Well, I, I wanna commend you on this section, and, I, and I've got one more question. Yep. Um, I watched you at the meetings, and, and you know what you're doing. I mean, you've been around, you. You know, and so, I love when I hear maintenance, because my colleague, Mr. DeLuca, will tell you the reason the school board does so well, and among many things, for many years they put in that maintenance contract, the 300,000 that voters to take care of their buildings, and, and we don't do enough of this, and we're getting back. But um, you did mention the other night to Selectman's meeting about the dugouts. I remember when those were built, so are they now, we're almost at, they're, they're like my age, need to get repaired? There are there's different dugouts. The ones I was asking for the fencing for was actually an Eagle Scout project that a, a kid did, but going with the new safety features on the fields and stuff, the, that at that time a fence in front of the dugout wasn't a thing. And now we're protecting everybody, putting a safety fence in front so the kids sitting in the dugouts don't have that line drive foul ball issue and they're protected. Thank you. And the only other question I have, and before I do, you, you present yourself very well. I'm very proud that you got into this position because you, you deserved it. Um, and and I, the, the chairman has done an excellent job, and I know we're going to come back to this on the question of uh, Mrs. Martin that has left. But I just want to read one line that's going to be in my mind because we're, we're not an endless bank account. It says, increase by admin to move employees halfway to the minimum step according to MRI. So 64,000 or whatever it is, is the minimum step. We've got to have, we've got to get to the point where we're putting these in budgets. Uh, we're going to have these big discussions because this is going to get so out of whack. And that's not for you to talk about, but I just want to put that out there. I appreciate what Christy uh, did a great job in the book and I love the detail, but I'm just overly concerned that we're going to get ourselves situation. But I have no other questions in any other part of this. Any other questions, Ms. Uh, Barnes? I have a question for the finance director, if sure. I may. Christy, on the, when you, the way you explained it in here about we weigh half to the minimum step, mm -hmm. that does not mean 64,000, correct? It's all different levels. Correct. It's bringing them in, so that notice saying that at the 64,459 or whatever's in there for the rec director, yeah. that is not even the minimum according to the MRI study. It's higher. And so the adjustment would bring him halfway to whatever that step is. And they're different for all of the different positions. Um, and it was Appendix A in the MRI yeah. study that we had sent out. So, so it's, you're not, saying it's not the 64. I just want to clarify Regina the 64 is not the minimum step. Just so you know, it's the 64 is We're less than the minimum step. So the adjustment that the Board of Selectmen made will bring him halfway 
between where he's at and the minimum step total bring him to the halfway point. And I believe that the Board of Selectmen had voted as a board to bring him halfway in the 19 budget, not just him, but all of those adjustments that you'll oh, see. Oh, we're well aware. Bring him halfway in 19, and then the remainder of the way in the 20 budget is how the board, I believe, was hoping to accomplish getting every position that wasn't at the minimum step to the minimum step. Any more questions, Regina? Yes. Would it be possible maybe for one of our future meetings if you could bring that total adjustment for what we did for the 19 budget for it's all the employees? It's fifteen thousand eight hundred and thirty nine dollars Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Any further questions on this budget? Mr. Weber. So it just made me think of one of the bigger, well, one of the final questions I have. That being said, are we going to get into the middle of this 2019 year and see a raise for directors? I wasn't planning on that. What's that? I wasn't planning on that. Oh, okay. Well, that, well I we understand. We haven't talked about it as a board. But. <coughs> I understand that, but the point, what I'm saying is we need to be able to be a proponent to the public. And I, I firmly believe the 64000 okay, that's fine, but we, in the middle of the year, we all of a sudden see these non-union raises. We're going to talk to one of them. And the tax level comes up with my opinion on that tonight, but that's the point I'm saying is that where does it end? So that's okay. not your decision, but anyway, that's all I have. Any other questions about parks and recreation? I have some. Now you've got new lights coming in. Is that what your plan is in this budget? There are, when I say lights, I'm not talking like unitil lights. Literally, we need like a $500 light at the top of one of our garages for the Tuck Field parking lot that has nothing right now that is you know, 100 yards long and there's no light at all. It's a, you know, it's a minimal cost for a light and then we're predicting the cost for the install on those lights. Uh -huh. And to have one at Tuck Field and then another one over at Eaton Park. Because I noticed your electric budget is flat, so you're not expecting that to, that new light to affect With the electric budget at all? With minimal, because the new LEDs, they're super efficient. We, okay. And I don't really know what possible increases those are going to bring at the moment. So, is it my understanding then that the grounds and fields maintenance that, that you've got planned is going to bring up all of our grounds to par level, so to speak? Right. Those fixes or adjustments, and the thing is, is those are going to be a yearly maintenance fee, like a maintenance issue every year. Is this, like, this particular number is the, going to be there every year? Approximately, yes, because okay. depending on what the fix is this year, there's certain processes they use. The next year, like when we talk about cracks in the asphalt or whatever, they have a system they use. Mm -hmm. And what we found is in our, like our inline rink, for instance, this year we've got another foot and a half of crack coming from that same spot. And mm -hmm. it's, they're gonna be, it may not be the same crack every year, but we've noticed the tennis courts, they start a crack here. If we don't fix them, they're gonna be a bigger issue. We fix them and then there's another crack somewhere else. They're, facilities yeah. that I want to keep. I, I certainly I appreciate there's always going to be a need for yeah. maintenance. Right. But we've got a 165% increase here. Mm -hmm. And my question is, with this new increase, it's not going to be decreasing next year or the year after? The, to be honest with you, there's a lot of places down at Tuck Field that so I could the answer is no, you've got to keep this these, right? these numbers that I added are going to stay in there, Good. or request to stay in there. Okay. Thank you very much for coming in and Thank giving us help with our budget. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Building and code. Questions on building and code? Mr. Warburg. Well, you know, as I just did prior, um, once again, and I'll make a statement, we hear a lot about, oh, people are leaving to go out of the towns. We have a building inspector that's been here. Is it 20 years, Kevin? Just about 20 years. Well, wow, that's right, and great job. Um, I, I don't know how they do everything they do anyway, but Kevin, the question I had, the assistant building inspector is not is not in this next year's budget? Or, you know, oh. Uh, yeah. You're oh, sure. it is? I'm sorry. It's So is that, is that under regular wages? Okay, so. It is. Um, yes, it is. All right, so what? You get zero dollars there now, though. So is there? A well, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Under regular wages is the um, two full-time positions in my office. That would be myself, as well as Paula Hamill. Yes. And then all the other wages are part-time wages. 
So the assistant building inspector is, is a teamster, right? He is not. It says assistant building inspector at start step, teamster CBA currently vacant. Um, no. There is the only. That's um, what I thought. I, I was, yeah. I, I, yeah, the only. The, the changes that happened there was the former assistant building inspector right. who had been with me or the department for about 15 years, he's right. moved on. Yes. So he was replaced by a part-time inspector. Uh, that's all. Oh, that's right. And, and we added an extra eight hours <laughs> to the existing part-time inspector. So I have one inspector, the housing inspector, Mr. McDonald, Scott. Correct. Right? Yep. He went from 24 hours a week to 32. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. But still remains part-time at 32. Right. And then he used to work three days a week. The new gentleman, Mr. DeRosia, Leo DeRosia, who came on board, took his three days. So he's part-time. So we actually got a reduction in salary. I see that. You're about to get So just what you want to hear. So and we, we kind of... We kind of did some restructuring, and I and I have to say that the gentleman that I that um, I brought in, Mr. DeRosier, is a very um, knowledgeable, um, talented individual. So he's a tremendous help, and licensed in many capacities. So he knows the trades. So he's very he's very uh, very good out in the field. Oh yeah, the question I have, and it's good to see you, uh, Kevin, as well. Um, we used to have these chuckles and discussion about your vehicles, right? I mean, where are we? Just out of curiosity, for the building department, because you guys always seem to get the band aids and the, the flat tires and everything else. So, <laughs> what, where are we? Where are we with the building vehicles? Because I always used to say, "Oh my God, here we go again." Actually, um, we have two um, Chevy Colorados. They're 2012, um, and one's in. Good condition, the other, I believe, is in fair condition. So we've just had to really, on the uh, on one of them, the one, the oldest one, as far as the longest one we've had, we're starting to put in some money into that a little bit here and there. So I am assume, I'm expecting next year's budget may show to replace that one. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you uh, for your good work, too. Mr. Frank. Just a quick question. Did I hear you say you added eight hours to a part-time individual moving to 32 hours? Yes. Okay. Is that taken into consideration uh, health benefits? No. No. He's retired. Oh, he's, he's retired. only worked 32 hours. <coughs> well, what if it's still <coughs> program? 30 hours. Not yeah. on some retirements. Not on some retirements. Okay. You're talking about Obamacare <coughs> regulation? No. No. I'm talking about oh, He's still about on Trump health insurance at 30 <laughs> hours. Right, that's Obamacare. Yeah, that right, but I mean, it's Trump. Yeah. But I know that 32 hours seems to be that number that they can't go over that. Is that correct? Can't, yeah, yeah, can't exceed Based that. We've got to watch it close. Right, yeah, so 30 yeah, hours is that. Obamacare. Watch it close. That's correct, yeah. yeah. And he, he it has, doesn't apply if you're retired because you're on Medicaid. That's on Medicare, rather. Yeah. I have but if you're retired from the state system, it does. Depends what. The gentleman are. retired from the state system, is he? No? He's, okay, uh, that's not the problem. Yeah. Yeah, what is the effect of sea level rise going to have on your department going forward? Do you have any sense of what it's going to mean for you in terms of additional work? So I didn't hear the question. I'm sorry. I'll repeat it. What are, what are the implications of sea level rise and flooding for your department going forward if you have any sense of the extra burden it will place on you? Well, there certainly is... Uh, ramifications to that with um, houses being flooded and things of that sort um, we've already been dealing with that yeah. um, especially the last couple years so I mean it's just it creates work but it also creates a um, opportunity to help people and there's money out there from FEMA for some of these properties to help them rebuild but when we do that we take that opportunity to be able to rebuild them to conform with the codes as far as flood zones and different things like that so that 
you know, it doesn't happen to them again. So, so sustainability would be an important part of a rebuild? Absolutely. Okay. And would you not license or authorize the rebuild if it didn't meet your sense of sustainability? Got to meet the code. Okay. And, 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 and flood zone regulations are part of the code. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions for Mr. Plot? No, no question, comment. <clears throat> your estimated revenues, is, is this actual? Or are we mm -hmm. up, up and down? Well, 294, 723. Yeah. At the well, end of October, they yeah. were at 235,999 for the end right. of October. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He's, he's right. He's right in, he's yeah, we still got two months to go, <laughs> Mike. You'll be right there. Yeah, he'll, he should be yeah. right about that, yeah. That's interesting when your proposed budget is yeah. 217,653. Yeah, I'm saving saving money on my budget and uh, yes. making money right. at the same time. Any other questions? questions? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, I will note also that your budget... Uh, is down slightly. Right. right. This is maybe the only one that's down from what I can see so far. So <laughs> well, good for that. On that. <laughs> uh, but I do want to ask you another question. Should we consider the assistant building inspector position to be eliminated? Um, just vacated. Not not eliminated, but vacated. So it could be filled next year. If the work uh, yeah. demand called yeah. for it, I could. Yeah. Yeah. I could be seeking mm -hmm. that. Absolutely. Okay. You know, as the work demand increases, obviously the revenue increases. And mm -hmm. you got to cover that. Just want to know how we should consider it. So it's vacant and that's, that's it. That's it okay. at, at this time. Thank you so much, Kevin, for coming in and helping us with Thanks, the budget. Jeff. Thank you. <coughs> Have a good night. You too. Next up is the planning commission, planning board, whatever. Or just plan all planning. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, any, Jason. Any questions for planning? I do. Um, Mr. Walberg. Jason, uh, we haven't officially met, I don't think, but I feel like we know each other because I've literally watched every time you've been on television with the planning board, and I think you do a great job. But Thank you. I just want the public to understand because there seems to be some confusion here. Okay. So you're the uh, town planner. That's correct. Who do you report to? The planning board. The planning board. So the MRI study, the wages that were changed, were they changed by the planning board or by the town um, management? That was administratively, uh, I understand. Board of selection. Board of selection, correct. So, <laughs> okay. That, yeah, well, that just, that answers that question. Um, is, so is, do I assume Laurie is the office manager? That's correct. That's 44. What is this uh, position is 35 hours plus some overtime. Where is the some overtime being shown in the detail? Well, that's uh, Lori's position where she, uh, you know, does minutes. The and, minutes, okay. And, and but where, are those covered by other areas, other budgets? So when she does the minutes, that's, where is that covered? That's covered within the regular wages. So her Within position, the regular wages? Correct. But why does it say 44794, but position is 35 hours? So the plus some other overtime still adds up to 44794. Right, that would be correct. Okay. Um, one second. I did have one more question here. And you've got an unbelievable job, too. I mean, uh, the development in this town is, is crazy. Um, the Rockingham Planning Commission, how, does, how do those dues, and, and just for the viewers at home, it, it, Yep. It, it drives me crazy when I hear Rockingham County Plan. It is not Rockingham County Planning Commission because not every county, not every town in Rockingham County is a member of the Rockingham Planning Commission. Yep. I don't know if you were aware of that. That's why it's called Rockingham Planning Commission. The 12400 for the dues, services to the master plan, matching funds for possible grant opportunities, how does that rate in relation, let's say, four years ago as far as the cost that we pay to them? Um, I don't think it's increased substantially. I don't have the exact number from four mm -hmm. years ago, but I don't. I don't think it's been a substantial increase. Um, it's been pretty steady. Maybe maybe a thousand or so more. I don't have the number exact before me. Yeah, and Jason is, is a bargain because I'll tell you, um, for years we had what was called a rider, a circuit rider, from mm -hmm. the Rockingham Planning Commission that actually sat at the planning board. So we would pay Rockingham. I mean, at the time, I think Mike, we were paying twenty twenty five thousand years ago just for that. So. Um, 
Yeah, I don't have any uh, any more questions of planning coordinator. I understand that, and you know, you you got a lot of work to do. But uh, outside of that, that's all I have, and I wish you the continued best of luck. Thank you very much. Any other questions on planning? I, I have some. Okay. Um, the Rockingham Planning Commission, yes. which is a non-government entity, right. we pay dues to, and it's not clear to me what the dues is. Um, well, that dues goes for... Um, no, no, the dollar amount. I'm sorry? The dollar amount. What's the dollar amount? Yeah. It's uh, 12400 12400 and uh, also I also have a question. Uh, the planning board, which I assume you're here representing as well, is that yes, correct? Yes, that's correct. Uh, the planning board is responsible for creating um, a CIP, Capital Improvement Plan? Yeah, um, yep, the, uh, one of our members is a chair of that committee. That's correct. Yeah. What is the status of that CIP presently? Um, the status is that um, it's been through the town portion, the school portion. We've received their item, um, their information, and... Uh, you should be getting that shortly. The board has to take a vote to accept it, which they will, I believe, probably late December, early January, and you'll be hearing more about that. Okay, so, so. Um, they won't be voting on it until January? Is that what I'm hearing? Well, usually the, that's when the planning board usually takes that vote to accept it. It's usually the, the, the second meeting in December or the first meeting in January that they do that. Yeah, I would hope it would be December because, you know, we kind of okay. need it for our yeah, final sure. review. Well, we will, uh, so it would be appreciated if we could get it before, before Christmas. Okay. Okay. Okay, we'll uh, make that happen. And I think that's it. No other questions, right? Thank you, Jason, for coming Jason, in and helping us much. with our budget. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is conservation and development. Now, raise your hand if you have any questions, but I have a comment to make. The reason why the word development is in there, because I'm sure you're wondering about that, right? <laughs> Certainly. Uh -huh. Because the Department of Revenue Administration's line item that you guys fall under is called Conservation and Development. Mm -hmm. All right. Start developing so right away. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what it's there for. So, uh, Any questions for Conservation and Development? <laughs> the, um, I, I just got to start off by saying, uh, being under the category of communications, and in 1996, we put the meetings on live television here in Hampton. And I have watched tediously at times when I hear people that don't know how to speak, they don't know how to use a microphone, they don't know what they're talking about, and it still happens to this day. But I want to say to the public, in the matter of Rayanne and Jay Dina, that you two have not only been great spokesmen for this town, but have always been pioneering the real issues that we need to address. And all the meetings that you've both been to, and I know there are many, and with children and everything, I can't even imagine. But the, the old bang for the buck, I have to tell you how impressed that I am with the work that you do in what, and most recently at the precinct meeting, that you brought up the, the whole flood issues and, and raising of buildings, and we're going to be talking more about that at, at the Deliver Such. But Jay, I just have to thank you both, because continue that great work, because you really communicate things very well. And I sit at home, and I watch them all. And whatever meetings you folks are on, it could be, you know, all of a sudden I tell this Jay again or whatever. So I want to thank you guys for the job you do. I really mean that. You really represent the whole conservation and planning aspect along with Jason in this town. And I think it's been a much, you've brought the excellence factor to that level. Thank you. Thank you for that. And I have no more comments. Any questions? Go ahead, Bob. I would just add to Brian's statement. We invited you to the precinct. Your explanation of the two flooding warrant article issues on zoning were outstanding. We've had very positive feedback about it. Yeah. I think you people have been ahead of the town on the flooding, sea level rise issues. The town is now catching up as it becomes more apparent. Don't stop leading. The town needs you to kind of help sort out that problem. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? I think it's good that the village district invites them down for those presentations because I too enjoy them. Well, I thank uh, you. That's a rare and welcome <laughs> comment. Well, I don't just dish it out like some people. I actually mean it when I say it. Well, and I and go ahead. Richard. We did have. Uh, we had wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second, Frank. 
Now you can say, go ahead, Regina. We know we did have one of the board I am speaking. Oh, oh I thought you would. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll let you know when I hear the okay, word. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I understand. Touche. <laughs> I've lost my thoughts, so go ahead, Regina. <laughs> I just want to say that we did invite them at the Board of Selectmen meeting, too, and they did a great presentation there as well. The Village District offers them an opportunity to go in depth with, you know, interactive questions, which is kind of a different format. Yeah, I know. I agree. I like that. And, and so, you know, I, I find it particularly enjoyable uh, when you guys do that in that format. Uh, I'm not dissing other formats. It's just that, that the Village District does offer a unique format there. They do. Um, I agree. We are <laughs> unique. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so a 3.98 percent increase in your budget, uh, all of which seems to be driving from the part-time wage increase, right? For Rayan, is that correct? There's, there's two spots. Um, one of them is increasing our minute taker um, from uh, 110 a meeting to 120 a meeting. Um, 120 a meeting. We're still below mm -hmm. some of the others that are mm -hmm. out there. So, and then you're right. The second piece uh, has to do with my salary. Okay. And how was that salary increase defined? It's also from the MRI study mm -hmm. to the halfway to the minimum. So the this, bottom a, this is an range. increment injected by the board of selectmen. Is that correct? It was something that they voted on. Yeah. That they put in. Okay. You didn't ask for it. They just put it in. Right? It was a correct. Okay. <clears throat> Um, thank you so much for coming in and helping us with our budget. Thanks. No, thank oh, by the way, I have one other comment I want to make. You know, I heard the, the Board of Selectmen refer to some fictitious fund called the Land Acquisition Fund. <laughs> and I'm sure, after our many years of discussion on that point, Jay, that you will correct that if it occurs again, right? I'm positive that they were referring to the conservation fund. I suspect that was <laughs> the correct. truth. That it was probably a slip of the tongue, but I'm sure. uh, hopefully we'll be more circumspect when we name our funds uh, <laughs> orally. So thank you again for coming right. in. Thank Thanks. you. Good night. Next up is government buildings. I assume that would be Mr. Manager. The only one here, so it's going to have to be. Wow, we got a beautiful lady in the back there. Well, yes. Any questions on government buildings? Mr. Frank. Thank you. You have a 55.8% increase in custodial services. What's that related to? That's related to the contract we have with the company and the need to bring in an additional part-time person for cleaning because the building's getting old. It's much more difficult to maintain. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Any other questions? Not on that I mean, I would think custodial services like sweeping the floor, mop the floor, vacuuming the rugs, things like that. We well, cleaning the laboratories. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. There's there's a significant amount of work uh, cleaning windows, yeah. um, keeping trash emptied. Uh, I, I acknowledge all that. I used to yeah. do it in my younger days. So yes, I did not. too. So yeah. So I'm, I'm very familiar with the, the, the amount of uh, labor it takes, but do you have an opening for them? Given the, uh, <laughs> given the, uh, I'd like to hire them for what I had to get paid to clean buildings when I was <laughs> younger, but uh, I can't do that because it's yeah. just not the way the world is today. Well, well neither is the dollar itself. That's right? true. <laughs> but what I don't understand, uh, Fred, is that we have the same building that we had previous years. Nothing's really changed. And we have a significant amount of additional usage. School department meets here all the time. Uh, we have to clean this room every time they meet. We have to reset the room every time they meet. Uh, we have to maintain the laboratories down here uh, on a constant basis where they're only used once or twice a week before. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's getting to be a problem. So the custodial services, I assume, come in at night? They do. Okay. After everybody has had, everybody's left the building, they're usually here sometime after 1 o'clock in the morning. All right, all right. So no matter how many meetings we have in this room, they're still only going to clean once. Right? That's not once a week. That's usually once a day. Yeah. Oh, what I thought mean, we were we talking use, about a daily. They're not no, coming in every day? We use this room every day. No, yeah. the custodial services, do they come in? They come in every day. Every day? Well, five days a week. Well, every work day, right? Yeah. Okay. So no matter how many times we use the bathroom during the day, they're still going to clean it once. 
That's true. Okay. But it takes time to do all that. And they weren't, they didn't have sufficient time under the contract to do it all. So we had to put an additional part-time person on. So is their contract based on how much, how much uh, time they put in? Yes. It's not a, yeah. um, an actual uh, work contract, it's a time contract. Yeah, time it's a time way. factor as far as cleaning the building's concerned. Interesting contract, okay. No other questions on that. Uh, thank you. Hello, Mr. Wilbert. Is it still A&M? No. No, it's not. Still We've what? been through a couple of A&M, the Cotley oh. Custodian. Yeah, and they, AM, we love PM. them, but. A.M. P.M. A.M. P.M., that's what A.M. P.M., right. PM, yeah. We, we love them. They did great work, yeah. uh, but they're, yep. we haven't <coughs> had them now for several years because mm. their bid to far have. exceeded this amount of oh, money five or sure. six yeah. years ago because of their overhead and so yeah. forth. Thank you. You want to do general government while we have the manager here, or do we want to go into the tax court? Would you like to do general government now? It's up to you. What's general government? Well, <laughs> executive. 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 Well, I thought that was on next week's agenda. It, it is otherwise scheduled. Yeah. Uh, oh, it was on well, yeah. next week's. Oh, it is because it says general think government. General government is executive. And it's oh, okay. Executive. So it's on next. Okay, well See, that's fine. We'll many of the items we're dealing with tonight are general government. But it's not all. Of I know the cursor when you were printing this <laughs> went over two. You know what I mean? No, no. It's just a general category, general government. Yeah, we yeah. always call it general government. That's right. right. Well, I didn't live in those old days. Well, that's right. Oh. You were around. <laughs> so yeah, we can go to tax collector now. Oh, wait, that's your Thank decision. Thank you, Mr. Warburton. <laughs> Please. <laughs> that's your decision. What would this town do without you? <laughs> I can see the headlines now. Oh. <laughs> Okay, any questions on the tax collector, <laughs> which is under the tab called tax, by the way. Yeah, thank you. I, may I raise my... Just a, a Mr. Walburton, do you just, wish to ask a question <laughs> or otherwise make a statement? A statement and a question. Okay. Um, I want to thank Donna Bennett for the, the job she does. And, you know, interesting enough, I've been fortunate to have worked with five prior tax collectors, <clears throat> and one of the folks, Lou Brown, I succeeded him on the Board of Selectmen in 1995, and he's a great individual. And then, of course, we had Ann Kaiser and Joyce Sheehan and great people. And you and Vivian, and it's just wonderful. But here's, here's the dilemma, or here's what I want to compliment you on, and I want to let the public know where we're at. I know you came in with the Board of Selectmen with a 6% raise. Mm -hmm. And we understand why that was. You didn't get a 3% raise last year, and you were looking to get a 3% this year, so two and you know 3 and 3 is 6. Right. So you have since, based on the selectman's input, down to 3%. Here's the sad part about this, okay? If this budget fails, you don't get your raise. No. But the non-unions are gonna get their raise regardless. And you know, that is a, that's, the, that's where we're at in this town. So the reason I bring that up, nobody else brings it up, but I'm gonna bring it up. I urge you, because you're well-liked, do a great job, like we used to do years ago, I urge you to put a Warren article in for your 3% raise to, to couch against the budget. Because it, the message, it may be the same this year, or it may not be. But if it doesn't pass, that's what we deal with. And I feel badly that you and, and Shirley are in the same type of position, much like you know Alan Lavin or whoever, any right. of the elected officials. Outside of that, I have no comments for, uh, I think, the tax collector's office. You know, we started the drive up during Mike and I's yeah. 20 years ago. Uh, actually, 1999, so yeah. it was pretty much after that. Right. It's a great thing. And, and just one quick question. What is the percentage? I always used to like to ask this. So we're coming up to the taxes due December 1st. But in July, what was the percentage of total tax we collected or that, that we were in? What, what shape were we in? Um, we were down to, I believe, 2%. Um, so 98%. 98%. Mm -hmm. That's all it. Thank you. And can I just mention one thing? Yes, go ahead. That um, the tax collectors uh, association did a survey, and in that survey, Hampton was the of of the people that participated in the survey. Hampton was the fifth uh, largest amount of tax bills, and we have the lowest Close. amount of people in the office um, doing the job. Most offices have the minimum of three people in the office. We have two. And there used to be five in my office at tax time. There's oh, two. I, I agree. And you know, as a segue, you, you, and this is more important even why I brought the point up. 
because it is sad. You're caught in a quandary. You have no, it's going to it's gonna either pass and you get your raise, or the budget doesn't pass and you don't get a raise. Right. And it's sad, but other non-unions do. So thank you for the great work that you do. Thank you. I have nothing else. Anyone else on the tax collector? I have a question. Ms. Bonds. The estimate for the tax bill that we just sent out, mm -hmm. about how much, how many millions of dollars is that? The for the, the, the warrant that I just half. got, yeah, the, the uh, about, I think it was just under twenty-eight million. Twenty-eight just million, just around twenty-eight million. And your budget's at less than one hundred six thousand dollars. Right. And your three percent raise is less than it's about eighteen hundred. It's seventeen hundred and thirty. Seventeen hundred dollars. Okay, so I want to make that clear to the public that it's yeah. seventeen hundred dollars. Very well deserved seventeen hundred dollars. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. All set? Yep. Yep. Thank you, Tom. Well, I guess that makes for an interesting argument that the IRS employees will be happy to make in front of Congress. Uh, thank, you. thank you for coming in. Um, legal is next. Any questions on legal? Mr. Wobber. Well, it has been customary that Mr. Gerald wasn't here earlier, but, you know, I, I, I keep hearing about all these people leaving the town, but I want to also let the public know that 15 years ago, it was January of 2003, I believe, that you started with the town. Am I correct, Mark? You're correct. Thank you. So Mark Gerald hasn't gone anywhere. He stayed here, and he likes working here, so that's, that's a good thing. Um, well, he didn't say that. <laughs> well, that's all right. He's glad I said I had the stand. I'd say oh, it if you Yeah, asked. you would say it. And we walked in a few parades together, too, by the way. So. And, well, again, and, oh. and the weather was a lot worse then, too. <laughs> Let me ask, um, just because I, I, I don't really have a problem with, uh, I, I, will, I will say this, and, and, and Mark can attribute to this. When I'm asked on different things, you know, when you look at outside council fees and litigation, that's a tough one because... Right through through the years, we could have yeah, you know, you just never know. So in fairness to you, that's something that is, you, you just you've kept that pretty in line, and, and it's hard to deal. The only the question I have is, what does your budget compare now to when we had two full time, you know, prior to Wanda Robson passing away, and how has that work been allocated? Because you notice I noticed you put more part time money in here so how how have you worked this out because you were hep on having that second attorney and then after she passed away we we took that money and did something else with it explain is this going to be is this going to suffice for what you need you think and continue on to deliver the services from the legal department well uh, the um, as you said 15 years ago <laughs> <laughs> um, what I started with was uh, one attorney, myself, yes. and a, a part-time person, 20 hours, and that was uh, Mrs. Robertson. That's correct. And she uh, showed the aptitude and had the desire to uh, advance in a legal career. And so she went to law school part-time, which the uh, town yes. uh, thankfully paid for her, and she continued to work part-time while she did that and uh, she did obtain her degree uh, she passed the bar in two different states which is quite an accomplishment Massachusetts and New Hampshire <clears throat> and uh, she had started to uh, pick up the the, the, uh, the overload that an, an attorney would handle such as trying cases and unfortunately, at that point, uh, she died uh, suddenly, very suddenly. Um, one of the things she was working on was uh, union uh, negotiations. That was uh, something that was handled in-house as opposed to outside, right, to outside, which is a big savings monetarily. And so that function, uh, basically, I took over the attorney part of the uh, negotiations and uh, the uh, assistant town manager deputy town manager had taken over the other part of that so what that that function became still in-house and therefore much more cost-effective but was split between two of us in-house um, another aspect that she was doing was uh, review of contracts 
and drafting of contracts. And uh, additional hours were uh, uh, given to the, the manager's very capable assistant who, who helps me very much with those contract draftings, invitations to bid for uh, competitive bidding. The uh, additional hours was allocated to her to take up part of that function. How much percentage of your, in time is money, would you say that department heads or other folks within employee in the town get a, an attorney, a legal opinion from you? How much of your time is spent on that a week, let's say? Uh, well, I have to tell you, uh, I may come in on a given day expecting to do one thing and never get to it because being there gives me gives the town a capability of preventing legal problems way down the road because we address them earlier. I deal with all the department heads you've talked to uh, basically constantly. I just, uh, it, it's a tough one because, you know, I, I was on the board at a time we had outside counsel and we, you know, the bill would come in and we'd pay it and, you know, there's ups and downs on that too, but Mark certainly has a lot on, on the plate. Um, is it fair to say, though, when people come forward with opinions without your input, that's where the town gets in trouble? Uh, there's certainly a greater potential. Uh, that My being there uh, certainly gives an opportunity to, to, for that to be Thank you. preventative. That's, uh, that's the answer I, I like to hear. Thank you, Mike. Sure. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Any other questions? We'll leave it. Can you compare your hourly rate versus outside council's hourly rate? Absolutely. Um, the, my whole department has been quantified, and that includes benefits, uh, a share of the building, just as if you were in a private law firm. Uh, the latest figure that uh, Christie gave me is about $98 an hour. That includes all mm -hmm. staff and everything. I'll give you an example. Uh, we recently were successful in some litigation involving uh, the Coakley Landfill Group, uh, where the court found in our favor that the Coakley Landfill Group was subject to the right to know law. The Coakley Landfill Group incurred with outside counsel $63,000 in bills opposing our petition. And the rates that their attorneys were charging, as I understand it, were between $300 and $350 an hour. And approximately how many hours a week are you putting in? 42. Uh, I, I track the, that. Uh, it's paid 35, but I work 42, basically. When I was running a firm 20 years ago, our hourly rates were much higher than yours. Uh, you're about as good a value as you could hope for in the legal part. Thank you. Any other questions? I have one question too. And you do Response. a lot of work. So you do a lot of work with the planning board too, correct? With, uh, oh yes. That's a lot of your time as well. Um, yes, actually, I didn't mention. Thank you. Yeah. Um, there is an aspect of our operation that's revenue generating, uh, which has to do with review of condominium documents, um, and uh, that is actually runs. Uh, in, in the last few years, with the ec economy having improved, as you might imagine, there are a lot more condominium conversions going on, each of which uh, generates the need for condominium documents. Um, and uh, the number has been way up in terms of the number reviewed. And again, we charge, uh, actually, it's 95 an hour for that. That's paid from the outside, and that goes to the town, not to, not to me. Any other questions? Mr. Frank, would you consider your department understaffed? Well, there is one additional uh, individual, very part-time, uh, that's been added, uh, and that is a, um, a summer intern. We had an yes. experience two summers ago mm -hmm. with an unpaid first-year law student who worked out very well. Uh, a number of things that I wasn't able to get to, he was able to help out with and a couple of large projects. And uh, on a trial basis, that's included uh, for the, in this particular budget. I think that would be helpful. Um, 
it, you know, the, the, the litigation load varies depending on, on how things go. Uh, at times, uh, certainly it's a stressful thing, but uh, as Brian says, I'm happy to be here. It's a great town, and uh, I'm pleased to be able to serve. Well, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for Beagle? Mark, you've been reorg now. You used to report to the Board of Selectmen. You're now reporting to town manager. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And I also noticed that you're uh, now proposing to pay the summer intern, whereas before it was gratis, right? Yeah, this would be a second-year law student, so someone a little yeah. further down along with the experience. And uh, we wanted to try that on an unpaid basis because we had not done that before to see is there value there. It worked out, didn't it? It worked out extremely so well. pay zero? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to attract some, a, a, a very so qualified. It worked out well enough, is that what you're saying? No, I'd like to just, uh, <laughs> this individual was just, was very great. It was, uh, uh, but I, I, um, I, I think it'd be easier to tr attract a, a, a qualified person with that. Oh, yeah. I'm competing against other places for that. <coughs> well, you got plugged in $25 an hour for the summer intern. Right. So obviously you're doing better for $50 an hour, right? <coughs> uh, but the, the oddity I found in that space is that we have a legal assistant who's being increased to 1867, and we're going to pay an intern 25 I just find that odd. You want to speak to that oddity? Uh, well, the uh, again in hiring a summer intern who would be a, a sec after completing a second year of law school. Um, I'm competing against other um, employers for that. I, I'm not sure 25 is enough. What, what are you sure of in terms of what would be enough? Um, I'm, I, I throw that out as an example. Again, it's a trial just like, mm -hmm. just like the, uh, the uh, unpaid person was. Mark, thank you very much for coming in and helping us. Thank you, Mark. Thank you so it. much. Thank you. Okay.